Welcome to the Wild at Heart podcast this week of July 11. Stacy Eldridge here. Before we get started on today's podcast, I wanted to let you know that we are holding a captivating event this October in Colorado. It's the 6th through the 10th and an incredible opportunity to dive deeper into the heart of our beautiful God, as well as into the heart that He has placed in us. Just go to wildatheart.org and click on the Captivating Retreat banner to learn more. Yeah, we're back to live events, right, everybody. And we are loving it. It's so great it's, to be back. It's so good. There's nothing quite like the face-to-face no. live experience. No, you can talk about it. You can tell people about it. But to be there in person, it's so powerful. Mm-hmm. We've been doing these for 20 years. And every time, it's unique. It's beautiful. And Jesus comes. He yes. just comes. Yes. So, yeah, really excited to tell you all about the Captivating Retreat. We do have a boot camp also coming up in November. That's the men's event, and you can learn more about that on our website as well. So it is mid-July. Yay, July. I love summer. (laughs) I love summer so much. We might title this the I Love Summer podcast. It could be. It could be. (laughs) I love summer. Yeah, I'm unabashedly a summer girl. Yeah. Yeah. And here are the, the three favorite things right now. Well, four, because they all go together. I love hummingbirds. Uh-huh. I love our hanging flower baskets. I love sitting on the porch in the evening, what we've been doing as the sun sets and the evening comes on, listening to worship. Yes. And there might be a popsicle <laughs> in there too. Uh, there was last night. Yeah, just- there, those are the four <laughs> things. Hummingbirds, popsicles, hanging baskets, and the evenings on our porch. Uh, Everybody, I hope you're getting something of summer, something of rest and beauty. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, this is our green time. This is In Colorado, it is. You know, other places, it's their brown time. So, oh, yeah, yeah right. it is true. our green time. Well, we love our green time yes, because it's brown for about seven months of the year. <laughs> yes. And, oh, gosh, we had a freak snowstorm. Yep, end of May. End of May. We got 14 inches and it killed the young tender leaves that were coming out on all the bushes on our hillside. You should see the look on Stacy's face right Ooh. now. It was really heartbreaking because we'd just been waiting and waiting and waiting for the green. It's going to be green. It's going to be beautiful. And so I had been praying. I had been standing on the porch, calling forth the resurrection. (laughs) As one does. Of the hillside. And it happened. It did. It came back. It's so amazing what nature will do. The resurrection, right? There it it is. It was the resurrection. Like every tender little leaf had died on all the oak and, and the young plants and everything. But when that happens, like on a catastrophic level, the bush, the plant, the tree will literally regenerate an entire new crop of leaves. And it did, and it's lovely, and it's green, and it's beautiful. And I am convinced now more than ever, with everything we've been saying about the cascade effect of the last couple of years, our search for relief, our need for renewal, we are looking for Eden. Yes. We are looking for Eden all summer long. Like, however that is for people, dinner with friends, barbecues, get to Hawaii. We are looking for Eden. Yes. Getting back into the garden. Beauty. Where things are right and yes. good. Yes. Even if it's as simple as sitting on our porch in the evening, there's just a moment where everything is lovely. We play worship and we say our prayers before we go to bed, but there's a moment where everything is just, and the hummingbirds are coming and going to the, yeah, there it is. <laughs> we have been exploring the centrality of the human heart for more than 30 years. Yes. 
And obviously, if you've tracked with us, even for a few months, you know, we talk about the heart a lot. The heart is the wellspring of life within you. It is the epicenter of our life with God. It's so critical. And and the unique heart that he has set within us as men and women, the unique heart he has set within each person. But there is this longing for Eden in the human heart. I mean, gang, as you're listening to this, just think, what are the photographs? Mm, right. So you're walking through a room, there's a magazine lying on the, on the table and a photograph of some beautiful place that just causes you to just stop and, and it just evokes longing, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Some beautiful place that makes your heart just go... <gasps> Go there. Right? What is it for you, hon? Oh, right now I was just thinking of actually a magazine that's at our house. And on the cover, it's a beach in Hawaii or Tahiti or the Polynesian. I don't know where it is, but it's just pristine and blue and white sands and sunny skies, endless ocean. My heart goes, yes. Yes. For me, sometimes it's actually the photos of a table Oh, yes. It's laid out beautifully. Like, come on, like the William Sonoma catalog or, you know, those sorts of culinary magazines where you have this gorgeous table outside on a patio and it's set for dinner, like a dinner party. I love that. Oh, my gosh. That's so evocative yeah, to me. Yeah. I dream of that, creating that, you know, underneath a tree with with lights hanging in the tree and just right. what, Yeah. Lanterns, it, yes. crickets, fireflies. It just evokes such like community and it feels like all is well and the beauty of it. Yeah. 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 We're talking about the Eden longing here in the week of July 11th because it's summer. And for a lot of people, they're more in touch with yeah. their Eden longing. What have you been dreaming about, friends? What have you been doing? What have you been hoping to get to? Sometime this summer, mm-hmm. some Eden esque experiences. Fred. Right, because it's outside. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's nature. Yeah. Right. We are we are meant to be one with nature. We're meant to live in it, move in it. I mean, swimming in the ocean, come on. Like it's so restorative. Some friends were headed off to one of our favorite places, the Tetons. They'd never been there. It's a national park in the western corner of Wyoming. So it was really fun to anticipate for them and then to get the first text with photograph that just says, oh my gosh. And it was them driving in. And the, yes, yeah, the, mountains. the glory. But there it is in magazines and evenings and music and dinners and trips, the eat and longing. So We've been exploring this over the years, and Stace and I have actually been coming into some really profound new terrain here. And I love calling it terrain because it actually is new terrain. And here's like a teaser thought. The places that you love in the world, that your heart just leaps, or your heart, maybe it doesn't leap, your heart just sighs, Mm. your heart settles down. A friend of mine was telling me when he drives into the junction in Moab, Utah, from the river road to the highway that comes in from 70, there's a junction there. And he says, when I get there, everything's right. Like something in my soul yeah. settles down. Well, yeah. here's, here's a really fascinating thing, folks. For each person, there is a place or a geography that you just resonate with. And the reason is because that external terrain, that geography, that landscape corresponds to an internal reality. It corresponds to the actual landscape of your heart. Now, we want to take you on a little journey here. Okay, so first off, we know the heart is central. We know it's absolutely important. But let me show you a new element of this. So, Humanity was born in Eden, and we have hearts for Eden. 
that's why all those longings mm-hmm. that even just a photo can elicit mm-hmm. a movie a song a, you know an invitation to go sailing it can just you know you're just there because you were born there mm. that's your home mm. and we lost eden and we go into exile in the biblical narrative humanity goes into exile but god begins the ransom of the human race through the people of Israel. And he comes back to dwell among his people, like walking with God in the garden in the cool of the day was our inheritance. That was our childhood. That's what we were born for. Well, he comes back first in the tabernacle Mm -hmm. and then in the temple, the presence of the living God with humanity once more. And I didn't know this about the tabernacle and the temple until I was listening to some podcasts and watching some of the videos from the Bible Project guys, like the gang out of Portland that's producing such good work. It's called the Bible Project. Their videos on Eden, their videos on the temple, their videos on heaven and earth are so remarkable. I had read the design narratives for the tabernacle and the temple, but never made the connection. It's beautiful. It's tapestry, it's colors, it's dyed wool and all all this, but it's flowers. Yes. And trees Mm -hmm. and gold and Mm -hmm. jewels. Pomegranates. Yes. It is meant to make you feel like you going back to the garden. Wow. So when you walk into the temple, there's beauty, there's life. And the presence of God is there. Mm. Okay. So to go into the temple or the tabernacle was like going into a little outpost of Eden in the world. Mm. Now, the really amazing thing is that with the coming of Emmanuel, the creation of the New Testament, you read the New Testament authors, it is very, very clear that God changes the location of the temple. It is no longer a physical building, okay? It is the human heart, and it is the people of God. He talks about it in both ways. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17, do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? 2 Corinthians 6, 16, for we are the temple of the living God, because this is where God dwells now, right? He, in Ephesians 3, Paul prays that Christ would fill our hearts. He takes up residence within us. And so we now, the friends and followers of Jesus, are the new temple. And I think some folks have heard that, or they've heard your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's also in Corinthians. Okay, but this is we don't connect in the dots here. Okay. So let me let me connect the line of the narrative. So the tabernacle and the temple was where God came to dwell. And it was meant to be an outpost of Eden in the world. It was meant to feel like you were getting back into the garden. So if the human heart is now the dwelling place of God, we are the new temple. It just could not be more clear. You are the temple now. If you are waiting for the reconstruction of the temple in Jerusalem, folks, I'm just so sorry to disappoint you. That's not where the story is headed because God already changed everything. The temple is worldwide now through the people of God. We are walking around carrying the presence of the living God in us. We are the temple. Well, that means that your heart is a little Eden in the world. You are a little outpost of Eden now in the world. This holds such promise for some of our deepest aches, longings. And just stay with me here because if you think this is like, wait, what? In John 7, Jesus says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Out of your inmost being will flow rivers of living water, okay? Rivers of living water. The river of life now flows in and through our hearts. 
and out into the world, out into the people that we engage and love and meet and care for. Okay, so the here you have this little Eden outpost. The river of life is flowing through it. Well, that's Ezekiel. That's when Ezekiel gets his vision of the temple in Jerusalem. He sees the river of life flowing out of it, and in Revelation, when John sees heaven and earth remarried, when he sees the city of God come to earth, the tree of life is there. So we know that Eden has returned because we haven't seen the tree of life since Eden. The tree of life is there. The river of life is there, flowing through the new Eden. But right now, it's flowing through us. Wow. Just going to pause so that people go, wow. Oh, my heart just bursts over it. It's just stunningly great news. It's it's so gorgeous. It is. It's so hopeful Mm -hmm. because that means that if we are carrying around the presence of God, we are walking with God in the garden in the cool of the day again. Yes. If we are housing or hosting or however you want to describe it, if the river of life is inhabiting us and flowing through us, if we are little Eden outpost, well, then what we can begin to pray for is, Lord, restore Eden in me. Begin the replenishment, the abundance, the the recreation. Do that in me. Right. I think of your, I'm talking about the winter storm that hit us at the end of May. And and then the prayers for resurrection to rejuvenate the green, that we can pray that for our own hearts. Rejuvenate the green by your very presence. Yes. I don't know what the loss was he went through, but it was devastating. It was the English poet George Herbert. And he has this lovely poem where he says, who would have thought my shriveled heart could have recovered greenness. Mm. But he goes on to describe it happening, like God resurrects his heart. And and now he talks about, I'm back. Mm. And I laugh and I play and I relish versing. Which wow. Is writing poetry uh-huh. for him. Like it, the resurrection. It's possible. Yes. The resurrection of the heart yes. means the re-edening of the heart. Mm -hmm. Re-Eden me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Create your Eden in me. Now, earlier in the spring, if you caught that podcast, we were talking about the importance of bringing the glory of God into our hearts and souls and shielding us from the desolation that the enemy's trying to bring into the world. We'll see, but that's because we're the temple. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The glory is such a weird word. Most people don't. It just sounds religious. So let me help you with that for a moment. Isaiah says the whole creation is filled with his glory. The reason you love Hawaii or you love the forest or you want to get back to, you know, Costa Rica, or wherever you, places you're dreaming of. Yes. Okay. Is because they're filled with the glory of God. It's, it's beautiful. It's life-giving. It's resplendent. You know, you think of the vineyards of Tuscany or, or of, you know, Sonoma Valley. You think just anywhere that there's beauty, life, goodness, abundance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's filled with the glory of God, all creation. And then in John, when you get the story of the wedding at Cana, Jesus turning water into wine, it says he thus revealed his glory. The glory of God is the regenerative, life-giving presence of God. And that glory now lives in you. It lives in your heart. So this is why we can pray. We can ask for, yes, let the river flow in me. Yes. Yes, let Eden be recreated in my heart and soul. Re-Eden me. I need that greening. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's so important to attune to your own heart, to not live apart from it. You just get why Proverbs 4.23 is so important. Guard your heart above all else. You just think of a master gardener needed to tend a garden. And that's us. That's us. Whenever the scripture talks about foretells, portrays, promises, redemption, 
restoration. It does it in Eden language. So listen to this. This is just one of like hundreds. This is from Isaiah 51. The Lord will comfort Israel again, his people again, and have pity on her ruins. Mm. Her desert will blossom like Eden. Her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. It, this actually is meant to take place within us as well as within the world. And it's you know absolutely fulfilled with the new earth This coming. is so beautiful and so hopeful. So beautiful, so hopeful. So Stace and I have been exploring this and what it means to be re-eden by God and the replenishment and the renewal, asking for the river of life to flow in us, asking that the regenerative power of God, the glory of God that filled the tabernacle and filled the temple, this is meant to fill us, okay? Ephesians 3, when Paul prays, he says, I pray that out of his glory, he would fill you. What we're finding in the writing of the saints was that the heart was always meant to be a garden, the garden of the Lord, and, and the garden where we go to meet him. And that's been kind of a neat journey for you. It's been such a life-giving experience for me. So, so what I do in my times with Jesus before entering into the day is in a quiet place where I'm not going to be interrupted. I sink into my heart. I picture myself sinking into a chair, but sinking deep into my heart where Christ dwells because there it is evergreen, evergreen. And I imagine it as a garden. It's a beautiful garden where I meet with him. And it's always getting more beautiful because where Jesus dwells, he beautifies it. So the expanse, I love what you said before about the landscape of our heart, just that our, our hearts, our temples yes. within are much, much larger in, in the realm of eternity. Yes. It's then, not a little four-pound muscle. It's game. not. <laughs> your, your inmost being is actually a vast and beautiful place. Yes. With a whole terrain and a whole geography. Yeah. Yeah. And as I've been um, practicing this and meeting with him there and allowing him to lead me to new places, to the river of life, to uh, put my toes in it or uh, cannonball in it, whatever, whatever it is, it's just... It's so nourishing. It's so life-giving. And it, it changes everything. It changes everything to be with Christ and to be with him in the garden of my heart that I carry around with me all the time. It's, it's like, say I get up from the chair and I'm entering into the day. My countenance has changed. Yes. I am more compassionate because I am connected to Christ in me. Yes. The hope of glory. Yes. You were born in Eden, folks. Your heart remembers the geography, remembers the terrain. You're made for it. Like there's an internal correspondence. And there we walked with God in the garden, in the cool of the day. And then the presence of the living God came into the tabernacle but before he came, he told them to build it to look like Eden, to remind people of Eden. And the temple, same thing, make it beautiful. Fill it with things that remind people of Eden because my presence will be there. Well, now his presence is in our hearts. So they're not like closets. <laughs> they're not warehouses. They're not like dull, boring places. This is, this is the new Eden outpost in the world. And we can ask. Let your glory, let your regenerative power restore the greenness of my heart, restore the terrain of my heart. We can ask for the river of life. Please, yes, Lord, let the river flow freely from my heart again. And I was asking Jesus the other day, I said, Jesus, what's in the way of that for me? And immediately he responded. He doesn't always, but he immediately said, fear. Fear. I'm like, oh, yeah. 
Totally. It, because fear just causes me to clench up internally. Oh, so you, it's not fear over what you're going to encounter in the garden of your heart? No, it's just fears of the day, oh, there fears you go. of the world, yep, yep, fears yep. of the future, yes. you know, just human fears, yes. right? Yeah. Fears for our kids mm-hmm. and all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? It's just, but that gets in the way of the free flowing. And so it's like, okay, Jesus, I need you to tend to my fears. And some of them, I, I just need to renounce, renounce these fears. Yeah. Some of them need care. Mm-hmm. I need you in here so that the river can flow more freely, more openly in my heart. This is a reality. These aren't just metaphors, symbols, pictures. These are actual things. John saw the river of life flowing through the middle of the city of God. Yes, like, yes, we're going to see yes. it. Yeah, We're going to jump in it. You get you get to swim in the river of life. Like it's, <laughs> now, it's big, folks, and crystal clear. Yes, beautiful, like like the best rivers are. So we can ask for it. We can ask what's in the way. We can say, "Regreen me, yes. re eden yes. me," and then we can learn as we turn our attention inward to commune with Jesus within us. You can imagine it at first, going into a garden within you. Because Eden is here. You are the outpost of Eden in the world now. Yes. And to meet with Jesus there. And then as you get comfortable with it, you ask him to show you the real thing. You don't have to imagine it even anymore. Like he can show you the internal terrain of your heart, the internal geography, and you can meet him there, commune with him there, Mm -hmm. and receive the care and the sustenance and the renewal that we all so need in this hour. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful and it is available. And for those that are are listening going, this is way too out there or not available for me, Mm. then, then we, because that's how I began, then we can begin by asking for faith. Yes. And he loves to give that yeah. faith to encounter him, yeah. to see him. You know, that's what he longs for, yes. that intimacy. Yes. So some folks jumped into the 30 Days to Resilient program in the One Minute Pause app mm-hmm. when we first released it June 6th, I think, was when it came out, June 6th, yeah, June yeah. 7th. Oh, yeah, it was June 6th because it was my birthday. Ta-da. Yeah. And so they, they might be there now. Other folks are just getting into the program, but I'll give you a little teaser if you're not there yet. This is one of the modules in the 30-day experience is five days of the Eden temple of your heart. Your heart is the temple of the Lord. That is undeniable in scripture. Well, therefore, it means your heart is an Eden outpost because that's what the temple was. Your heart is the Eden temple of the living God. Well, then you can start praying for things like Isaiah 51, 3. Lord, comfort Israel again. Comfort me, your people. Have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden. Please, Jesus, do this within me, Father. Her barren wilderness, like the garden of the Lord, let this take place within me. Let your glory, your regenerative, creative power that we see in creation, let that fill these inner deserts and barren places and make them blossom like Eden. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. And you can go to so many other passages. Psalm 1, right? Talks about meditating on the truth of God. You will be like a tree planted by a river and you will be evergreen. It's Eden, folks. This is all Eden imagery. Jeremiah 17, cursed is the person who trusts in themselves and turns from the Lord. They will be like a desert. Mm. He says, but blessed is the one who puts their confidence in me, they will be like a tree yes. planted by a river, evergreen, always bearing fruit. That's Eden. It's using Eden imagery to describe our humanity, the restoration of our very nature to us. So like re-Eden me, Lord. Mm. 
reheed in me. And then I would love, Jesus, to know how to commune with you more intimately yes. in my heart where you live, which isn't a closet. It's not a broom closet. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a, dark and small. It's not dark and small. It's a big, vast, beautiful place. Show me, Lord. Show me the temple inside. Show me the beauty of it. Take me there. Let me meet with you there. So, gang, we are actually going to take you now into one of the sessions from 30 Days that comes from the five-day module on the Eden Temple of Our Hearts. Welcome back to our evening session. Take a few deep breaths as you settle in. Release the day behind you, all the drama, every person, everything. I give everyone and everything to you, God. I give everyone and everything to you. Take a moment to love Jesus as you settle into his presence. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I really do love you. Our hearts are the temple of God. The temple was an outpost of Eden in the world, filled with beauty and with God's presence, filled with his glory. As Jesus continues the restoration of our hearts, he promises that these little temples will flourish like Eden. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you're dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Resilience comes as the glory of Eden fills and restores our hearts, giving us strength. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. This means that when you go into your heart to meet with Jesus, you are going into an outpost of Eden. You are going into a garden. The river of life flows there. Each person's heart is unique, but each person's heart is a garden of the Lord. Think of the places you love in this world. Each of us has certain places we choose to go for rest and for joy. Some love the beach. Others love the mountains. Where do you choose for vacation? Recall to mind now the places you love the landscape that especially speaks to your heart. Here is a beautiful truth 
The reason you love that particular landscape is because it corresponds to the landscape of your heart. Your inner world has a look and feel to it. Sometimes all it takes is a beautiful photo to cause your heart to leap. The reason is that it corresponds to the landscape within. So as we practice communing with Jesus in our hearts, loving one another and receiving his strength, we can begin to deepen our experience by allowing him to show us the garden within, the landscape of our heart. Begin to love Jesus within you, turning your attention within. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Jesus within me, I love you. Settle in, releasing the external world. Turn your attention to Jesus within you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Jesus within me, I love you. Ask him to show you the garden of your heart, the landscape of your heart. Holy Spirit, help me this evening. Give me eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord Jesus, show me the garden of my heart. Show me the landscape within as you create Eden within me. Lord Jesus, Show me the garden of my heart. Show me the landscape within as you create Eden within me. I pray that Eden would fill my heart, Lord. Let me see the Eden you are creating within me. Fill my heart and soul with your Eden glory, Lord. Let this landscape blossom like the garden of the Lord.
fill me with the resilience of Eden. So beautiful. Thank you. And, and honestly, just, just sit with that, friends. There's, yeah. there's no more words that no, we need to share. Just linger there. 